November 1977, Peter Gabriel had just finished touring to support his first solo album and he was already back in the studio. He had talked at length with his friend and guitarist Robert Fripp while on the road and they had ideas for Gabriel's new album, one that could prove much more biting and focused than its predecessor. Because at the end of the day, Peter's debut was fine all over the place. Now that Gabriel had proved that he could be a convincing songwriter, it was time for the next step, find his own voice. It was time to create a synthesis of the new tendencies in music that Peter found exciting. After leaving his prog days behind, could Gabriel manage his alchemist trick? Hello to Patters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and a passion for our good old Pete. Back when he was enjoying a sabbatical from the music business, Peter Gabriel had tried to keep in touch with the trends. In fact, he had watched quite a bit of live music. He was mostly impressed with two acts. Peter has seen Springsteen live at the Hammersmith Audion in 1975, but he had also attended some early Sex Pistols performances. This coupling might come as a surprise to some of you. Yet, there's at least two common threads between these two artists, their energy and their deep desire to connect with the audience. That's because I'm not mentioning that both Springsteen and the Pistols described real people and their real problems, unlike most prog pop or disco acts. When Fripp started talking with Peter about what he could do for his next album, he must have felt like Robert was putting honey in Peter's ears. Streamline the sound, take a more direct approach, talk about what mattered instead of coming up with made-up tales of Bergmeisters and all that. Peter was listening. When his first solo tour ended, Gabriel went straight into a studio. Obviously, Robert Fripp was with him. Not only was he going to play guitar, but he was going to produce the sessions. Bass player Tony Levin and synth player Larry Fast from Peter's touring band were also brought along. Add drummer Jerry Marotta and guitarist Sid McGuinness to the mix. And most importantly for Gabriel, Springsteen's keyboard player Roy Bitten. The sessions produced Peter Gabriel's second album, which would become known as Two, or with the nickname Scratch, because of the cover. Fripp brought a different approach to production than Ezrin had with Peter Gabriel 1. Like I explained in the video essay about that album, link in the description, Ezrin liked coaching the band into playing pieces more or less live and he loved huge sounding songs. Fripp wanted a stripped down production, lean, dry sounds, more in keeping with the current trend in the industry, focused on punk and new wave sonorities. Fripp also liked getting over dubs over minimal basic tracks. This meant the album took longer to complete, although everything went by much more quickly compared to later Gabriel's albums. But did the sessions actually produce a positive change of direction for Gabriel? Was it a further step in finding his own voice? And most importantly, how does the music hold up today? Before getting into my thoughts about the music, I need your help. If you liked this video this far, please put a like to it. If instead there's something you don't like, or if you hate my guts, please, drop me a comment. If you just dislike the video, I will have no clue on how to improve my content. Thank you for helping me produce videos you'll actually like. Back to the music. Scratch is a big change for Peter Gabriel. Definitely a step toward the approach characterizing the rest of his career. Some proc elements are still present. The quasi-mythical storytelling is the biggest one, but these are much more in the background than in Peter Gabriel 1, and everything in Scratch 
sounds fresher to today's listeners than car. I have to admit, there are low moments. DIY, for example. The chorus is so repetitive and bland that spoils the song for me. Exposure, with its use of the famous Frippertronics, is okay, but wait, what's Frippertronics? It's Robert Fripp generating a carpet of floating sounds feeding his guitar into random echo tapes and reacting to it. Exposure is okay, but a slower build-up would have made it better. As it is, it sounds like a short dub slash meditation piece. Perspective is laudable for its message about nature, but it's a bit of a filler. Anyhow, it's not the single songs that bother me most in the album. I think the tracklist does not help the listening experience. They wanted to more or less alternate the two souls of the album, the popish, fast, gritty one, and the glossier and more reflecting episodes. But sometimes it doesn't work. I told you how I would like exposure to be longer. Perhaps that wouldn't be necessary if the atmosphere created by Indigo hadn't been broken by animal magic. What are the high points then? On the air, for example. A really strong start for the album. Gritty, powerful, with vivid imagery. It's the punkest moment in the album which means that it has punk's energy and no-nonsense attitude. Gabriel could never sound punk. Mother of Violence is a beautiful ballad that reflects on violence and its nature. The production is sparse but effective and heartwarming. No self-defense is all you need It's getting hard to breathe And that synth sound closing the track an uncommon closure that puts the song right at home with the rest of the album. White Shadow, a song that starts like a romantic piece of Boz Scraggs and then turns into Peter Gabriel's take on Led Zeppelin's Kashmir. But the thing that strikes me most about the album is the recurring theme of the lyrics. The songs all talk about stranded people. People unable to find their place, facing death, violence, fear, failure. I think Gabriel simply followed Springsteen's and Leiden's direction. The feel of personal uneasiness we find in Peter Gabriel 1 lyrics is now directed to life choices, society, social connections. Gabriel's lyrics reflect the turmoil the West, and England in particular, was facing at the end of the 1970s. Not a particularly jolly time to be in Albion. You love this album. Your loved ones say that if you put it on one more time, they're gonna go Hannibal the Cannibal on you. What then? Well, first you need to subscribe to this channel. Help me get monetized so I can use the money to hire somebody to edit these videos and produce more of them and... Sorry, back to the content. Give No Pussyfooting or Evening Star by Robert Fripp and Brian Eno a spin if you like exposure. Try William Basinski's The Disintegration Loops if you want something chilled, somewhat nostalgic and depressing especially if you know the story of how they came to be. If you would like something in a similar overall vein as Scratch, you can try with Chelsea Girl by Nico or Fear of Music by Talking Heads. 
And with this, the video has come to its conclusion. See you soon for more music related content on these very screens. This was Simon Mas, my dear Top Patters. Stay cool and keep your top hats on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love.